All right, guys, we're talking cheapest place to live in the entire state of Florida for 2023. My name is Adam Hancock. And when I say cheap, I'm, my assumption is that that's not really probably what you're after. You, If I listed the 10 cheapest places to live in Florida, you might not live in any of those. What you're probably looking at is you're targeting a metro, if I had to guess, and you want to know affordable options within the realm in comparison to the most popular areas that may come in a premium. You want to know about value. So we're going to talk about perspective value here. Uh, we're going to talk about 10 of the most popular places to live in the entire state of Florida. And I'm going to give you one to two options to navigate within them. So I hope you really enjoyed today's video. Let's hop in. Okay, number one on my list is a metro called Sarasota, Florida. And where this sits in the state, Southwest Florida, below Tampa, above Naples, and the city of focus for this list is called South Vents. The reason this is the most interesting is that when you look at this area, the, the in vogue areas, Siesta Key, the Barrier Island, you have Lido and Longboat Key, more Barrier Islands, you have the Sarasota mainland, it's coastal proximity. That's like what Sarasota is known for. If you go about 40 minutes south of the main areas, the main areas, you get an area called Venice, which is a city within Sarasota County. And the South Venice, including Venice, you have three beaches, you're extremely coastal, but the price is nowhere near the thing's 20 miles above it. And you're talking South Venice pricing at 400K median price versus a million dollar price point on Siesta Key, but a very, very interesting lifestyle and arguably more quaint, just as coastal, more quaint. It is charming. It is docile. And if you add elements like the new Welland Park, new construction environment, it becomes incredibly interesting and only to get more so I think moving forward. All right, second on our list, we're talking the Naples, Florida Metro. So we're going a little south of Sarasota here. And the city of focus is Cape Coral, Florida. I've been probably saying for three and a half, four years now on this channel, Cape Coral, Florida is incredibly underrated for waterfront uh, affordability. And we sit here in late 2023, as crazy as this market's been, and all these prices that people are talking about, at $398,000 median price in Cape Coral right now in October of 2023. Cape Coral has more waterfront canals than Venice, Italy, has double, triple, maybe 10 times the amount of water boatable restaurants than Sarasota, Florida, and Naples, which are very boater friendly. And your access to living on the water without having to be a trillionaire is just way more feasible and it still stands today. Just to give you a little bit more context, if you haven't looked in this area a little further, um, you're sandwiched in between two of the most expensive metros and most attractive metros in the entire state when it comes to the 1% of those areas. But if you just said average areas, I'm looking in Cape Coral, I'm also looking here. Estero, Florida, $510,000 versus three ninety eight. dollars Bonita Springs, $590,000. North Naples, $593,000. And if you've heard of Babcock Ranch, which is in Puna Gorda, which is very affordable, it's even cheaper than that on average. So if you haven't looked into this yet and you like the boat, or you like the lifestyle in general, I think it's incredibly intriguing. All right, number three on the list, we're talking Tampa Bay, Florida. Now, this is a much larger metro than the other two we've spoke about previously. And we're gonna focus on one particular area called Wesley Chapel. This is a very suburban conversation. Now, in a big, big city, for Florida's sake, uh, it could be overwhelming. You have a lot of options. If you're looking at the suburbs, I think if you had to pick one, and you're going east, west, south, and north, I think you go north. If you go north of town, the most in vogue right now is an area called Wesley Chapel and an area right next to it called Tampa Palms. So if you take that combination between, it's really, really interesting. New homes, good schools amongst a busy city, which is choppy as schools go typically in an in a urban district. Um, they're putting the Crystal Water Lagoons in here. It's family friendly. There are activities, there are sports. And there are a lot of people at very similar demographics as far as age and kids' ages to get involved in communities. And this is where a lot of the churches are going and just the new suburb areas that um, are popular. But you're still uh, pretty close distance to all the cool things about Tampa as far as like the theme parks and the downtowns and Ybor City and the River District and all these kind of things. So if you had to pick one right now and pin me against the wall, for me, it's Wesley Chapel. And just to add a bonus to that conversation, if you went to a town like Sarasota, Florida, and you said, I want a similar suburban option, which these are neighbors, then the Sarasota version of Wesley Chapel is called Lakewood Ranch, sits in the same part of town, s similar suburban vibe, but you're talking a difference in average price at probably $200,000 per home. So I think as far as affordability in general, when it comes to Southwest Florida, Wesley Chapel might be the best mousetrap. Okay, number four on the list, we're talking the Orlando, Florida Metro, and now we're heading to the central part of the state. 
And in this size metro, you have options on top of options on top of options. So where do you start? Well, I want to focus on one particular area. That's Well, it's a combo platter, but St. Cloud slash Kissimmee. And at a median price over the last 12 months of, of a close price of $369,000, I think you have some interesting value because you're close to the theme parks. You're right below Celebration. You're close to the bougie districts like Dr. Phillips. You're not that far from downtown. And depending on where you go within these districts, you have an old Florida flair combined with a new development kind of districts like the Lake Nona's of the world. But your price is very different, right? So if I just rattle them off, if you're anywhere familiar, you're going to go to research after this. So you have a $370,000 price. Well, Winter Garden, which is popular in this district, $570,000 home value right now. Clearmount, which is considered, uh, Clearmont, which is considered affordable, $427,000. Uh, Celebrations at 560, Dr. Phillips at 518, Winter Parks at 447, which is another one that people from Orlando would pop in their head as affordable, and Windermere even at $686,000. So I think St. Cloud and Kissimmee are still sneaking in with some really interesting value. Okay, halfway point number five on the list, we're heading to my college hometown, and we're talking the Florida Panhandle. And in a area known for emerald green waters and coastal beach towns and lovely in a lot of facets, I want to focus on one particular beach called Fort Walton Beach. Now, really interesting because if you know anything about the Florida Panhandle, right, you have the Destins of the world, you have Pensacola Beach, you even have Navarre, you have Seaside, the full 38 district. Well, Fort Walton Beach sneaks in in between all of that conversation, right, right above Destin at $335,000 median price right now in 2023, which even surprised me, I had to like triple check it. So to have that kind of price town versus a Destin at almost $700,000, a Pensacola Beach at four eighty three. dollars I uh, lived in Gulf Breeze, Florida, which is Pensacola Beach adjacent the whole time I was in school at University of West Florida. Navarre, I would say if you had to poll a bunch of people, I bet Navarre is number one on their list for affordability, $416,000. And then you go to the seasides of the world and the watercolor in 30A, they're sitting above a million median price over the last 12 months. Fort Walton Beach, small town feel, extremely coastal. It sits on the same coast on the Santa Rosa adjacent coast as all the rest of these beaches. So very similar perks at not even half the price. Uh, very interesting overall. Hey folks, super quick interruption. I just wanted to mention this video is brought to you by my real estate brokerage, the Sunshine State Company, the smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. Please reach out if we can help you with any and all real estate needs and let's get back to the content. All right, moving right along to number six on the list, we are heading to North Florida and we are talking the coastal part above Jacksonville. I want to focus on one city called North Beach. Similar alignment to number five, coastal affordability. In a land, so North Florida attractive for a lot of reasons, right? You have, uh, it's not only coastal, but you have a super huge metro with Jacksonville right there. You have the big city perks and you have a coastal environment that's not randomly coastal. You have all the things people like about St. Augustine. It's like a northern beach. It's dune-esque. It's protected. It doesn't have quite the mania that a lot of the things do in South Florida and Southwest Florida. So that's a lot of the perks. Well, a lot of times it comes at a premium. So what you have with North Beach is you're sitting at um, a median price of the last 12 months of $324,000, which is kind of wild. But what is right next to North Beach is Atlantic Beach, and that's $658,000. What's next to that is Neptune Beach, and that's sitting at $719,000. And then you have the you know popular Jacksonville Beach uh, at $611,000. And you even take, say, just affordability in the suburbs in general when it comes to North Florida. Beach Haven a lot, I was on a lot of people's list. That's $472,000. And even in, throwing at East Arlington, even more affordable, young professionals, et cetera at $385,000. North Beach trumps all of that. It's just as coastal as those other three beaches I mentioned. If you have a military background, uh, there's a, some hidden perks there if you research it as well. Um, but in this conversation for this part of the state, I think um, it could be a good one to look out for. All right, number seven on the list, we're talking South Florida. We'll move a little quicker at this point. Uh, the name of the game here simply and proper South Florida is to try to stay west of the Interstate 95. And then you can find adjacent cities that maybe are east, that are more east, basically, in this part of the state is coastal, right? Um, you can find the adjacent neighbor that's west of the interstate. And that's kind of the dividing line where you get a lot more value, a lot more affordability, but you can still be in the same location. So for instance, right, if you're targeting Coral Gables, maybe you try to look at a Pembroke Pines. If you're targeting Boca Raton, maybe you look at uh, Coral Springs or par parts of Parkland. 
And now uh, this is perspective cost, right? Depending on where you're from. But compared to the adjacent cities with very similar lifestyles, if you can get close enough to the interstate, um, you maybe sacrifice seven, eight, nine miles, but far more affordability is going to exist from Fort Lauderdale to South Miami if you take this uh, concept. All right, number eight on the list I'm calling Central East Coast of Florida. If you move to this part of the state, I just want to throw out Melbourne, Florida. Melbourne still sits in a really interesting value. $375,000 median cost over the last 12 months and uh, a lot of value there. You unspoiled beaches. Um, it's kind of like a throwback town of sorts, but it's become more in vogue and still state affordable. It's relatively close to the Kennedy Space Center if you're into that kind of thing with the Titusville stuff. The historic downtown is very walkable. It's charming. It's quaint. And whether you end up in Melbourne or you venture over to, um, you know, and visit Andrew Pench over in Bureau Beach on our team, uh, these kind of towns, I think, still have a lot of value as the South Florida and Southwest Florida have become more in vogue at sitting at prices like this with that coastal proximity with beaches and water and fishing and the Indian River Lagoon. Um, it's going to be hard to beat here in the future. Okay, number nine on the list, I'm calling more Tampa Bay. This is another city within the Tampa Bay metro. There's only so many metros in Florida, right? So I'm picking the most interesting ones. I want to give you a second option. Uh, this one I'm talking about Greater Carrollwood and the town and country area. Basically, this is West Tampa, Florida. So I spoke about uh, West Wesley Chapel earlier in the video, if you had to pick one suburb. Well, there's another direction you can go, and that's West. And what West gives you in the Tampa Bay market that's unique to other smaller markets is it gives you suburban housing that's a little bit more mature, some new construction mixed in, but you both get an equal distance to the city and the beaches, and that's hard to find. Because all of Tampa Bay is inland. So if you, go to the, if you go to West Tampa, then you're 20 minutes both from Clearwater Beach and you're 20 minutes to downtown Tampa, the airport, everything you really need. South Tampa is right there as well. Greater Carrollwood sits at $399,000 in that conversation, median cost. There's another area called Town and Country that sits at $371,000. And the other areas over there are... Citrus Park, you have West Chase, which is a, a kind of a newer suburban area. But the location on the map is where you win here because if you live in Tampa Bay, you have three counties and none of the beaches exist in the main Tampa part of those counties. So to be in between, work on one side, beach on the other, um, is hard to come by. All right, our 10th and final one for this list, I'm calling more Central Florida. So we're going to go back into the Orlando, Florida metro and I want to throw in Lakeland to that hat. Now, if you're not familiar with the state or you haven't lived here a ton of time, Lakeland's kind of this weird, random area. It's kind of country. It's kind of not. But what it does do is it sits more in between Tampa and Orlando. So you get a little closer to the coast. But what they put over there, and I went to school there for two years before I transferred over to the Panhandle, what they did put in Lakeland is they put a lot of colleges kind of. There's Southeastern, there's Florida Southern, there's Warner. And a lot of those college kids in you know the era that I was in college stayed over in the area. So then they uh, put families in the area and they opened businesses in the area and it no longer became country Polk County exclusively. It became a really affordable place to purchase a home and also be a really interesting spot in the state, but it also snuck into that area because there was no big, big city that sat in the middle of it. It's, it was kind of all country and historic. Needless to say, like this video is not meant for this purpose, but Lakeland is something I'd put on the list. The median price was $292,000 over the last uh, the last a year or so. And this is an area that that's where Publix is headquartered, the grocery store is. So Publix funds a lot of like the parks. And if you have young kids, um, it's, you know, it's safe, it's spread out. You can get a lot for your money and it would be a not a bad spot to hang out to at least figure out where you wanted to live in the state in totality. All right, my friends, that is a wrap for today's video. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this kind of video, that is a top 10 in nature. We we have many more actually. There's, so there's a separate playlist. You can actually subscribe just to the playlist. That's like best beach towns and best place to live in an entire state. So if you like this style, uh, check those out. They're all a little different. Um, if you have already selected a city and you're like relocating and you're getting a little bit more serious, we have something that satiates that need as well in A to Z kind of format. That's a city guide. Like it's kind of like a video relocation guide of sorts. So check that out. Those are just a couple things in the ecosystem. The best way to learn about everything going on would be simply to subscribe. If you haven't already done so, uh, please subscribe. That just alerts you with what's coming next. Again, my name is Adam Hancock. Uh, most importantly, I appreciate you giving us any of your time to watch any of these videos. Uh, always grateful for that. And we will see you on the next one.